Welcome back to here with Goldberg. Today we'll be discussing your own Brook and libertarianism. This is a suggested by our friend Bitcoin Meister, and Brook is a fascinating character. So he served in the IDF, but he's actually a critic of Care Bear Land's ethnic policies. He got a PhD in finance, was a professor at Santa Clara University, and then for almost two decades, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institutes. Now, by far, one of the more competent voices for libertarianism I've come across. Often the libertarians are kooky or they just appeal to a vague idea of freedom, but they can't distill it into something that the everyday Abel Baker Charlie is going to comprehend. So a good example, he says, entrepreneurs, CEOs, business owners, they assume the risk such that you can just work a job, not have to fret every day, and that improves your quality of life. Now, that sounds better on paper than it actually happens to be, but we'll discuss later in the video a subject. He brings up the 1980 law that mandates hospitals give ER care to everyone. The problem with this is you've got illegal immigrants, and if they run up a bill and they dash, that has to be passed on to other people or to the government, which means it's going to affect you in some way. The use of insurance for Anytime you go to the doctor, as opposed to just paying out of pocket, really insurance ideally should be a rainy day type setup. And it's so ubiquitous that adds in bureaucracy and increases prices for the regular consumer. He also does not like Social Security and Medicare. No surprise there. I'm in agreement, generally speaking. I wish that you could just have your money going into a 401k, maybe the Medicare and an HSA. And if you have a company that wants to match it, they can cut a check to that account, but you would carry it throughout your career as opposed to rolling it over, which is a pain. If you can't do it electronically, doing it by snail mail is obnoxious and actually kind of risky because these are fat checks that are just anyone can open up the envelope. He also points out the 2009 Credit Card Responsibility Act, which tried to equalize risk by preventing them from charging higher rates to those who have bad credit or not reliable. And, you know, as a bipartisan piece of legislation, the idea being they can't take predatory measures against regular people. So I'm torn on that. But I will say, the cheap credit model of our world pisses me the hell off. I was talking to this lady recently, and she goes, Yeah, that guy, he must be successful because he's driving a BMW. I said, no, that just means he can get a loan and make a minimum payment. I know quite a few young guys in their 20s that they have like two or three luxury cars, but that's because they're making the payment and all the you know, interest. It's not a sign of success. Now, I get wanting to do that with Instagram, but I think it should be required you have to put down 50% to buy any luxury item because that would flush out all these little clowns who want to pretend, oh, look at me. And then, of course, women are the most susceptible to that. Oh, yeah, he, he must be a baller. No, he has a freaking banker. There's a fundamental difference. As is tradition for a libertarian, he blames the federal government for the 2008 economic collapse, saying that Fannie and Freddie took on these toxic mortgages. The regulators were mandating that lenders give options to those who actually didn't have qualifications. Bernanke argues, yeah, they should have had tighter restrictions at the Fed level. I suppose one of the best pushbacks besides getting into CDOs is to point out if these companies, private sector ones, didn't want to assume the risk, did they ever try challenging it in court or they'd just go along figuring, ah, oh, yeah, well, we're, we're going to get bailed out. And that's a problem in of itself from a libertarian perspective. Don't give them money if they behave badly. I would say we should have just bailed out people's mortgages, like paid them off. Probably would have been cheaper and it's less toxic because then the banks probably wouldn't have collapsed. They would have gotten that infusion of money back. And the ones that were still just behaving poorly, you know, do what you want with them. I get it. It's unfair. Well, I had to do it the hard way. But if you're going to spend the money, you might as well do it helping regular people so that they don't lose stuff they've accumulated, assuming that they're at least trying to get a job and not just living off the dole. Another perspective advanced by Brooke, which is common with libertarians, is this idea that if you don't like the person you're working for, the employer, you can always find another one, bid for higher wages and superior treatment. 
That is a tad bit optimistic, though. If you're in a rural area, you might only have Walmart or Dollar General. So they're going to exercise considerable influence over what you get paid and what your benefits are. Not everyone is as mobile as we like to think. And of course, the internet is an equalizing factor, assuming that you have and it's reliable, not HughesNet satellite, which is garbage. There's a reason why people have called the US military one of the greatest anti-poverty programs in the world, because you can go to the recruiter's office, if you pass an aptitude test, you uh, have the, the medical clearance, you can go in there and in four years come out with your college paid for, potentially a tax-free disability pension, VA access, you can certainly stay in longer and get the full pension. And this is why I think it was City Crusher, he was ripping TFM, a new pleasure spot, by going, you're such a big libertarian, and yet you escaped the trailer park by being in the military. But you'll see it a lot. I don't know what Brooks specifically says about the military, but guys like Aaron Clary, eh, join the military, because they realize it's a good position to be in if you have next to nothing. It's much harder if you're in legit poverty to just start a business from scratch or just move someplace else for a job. That may be less realistic. So a little bit of a government provision of a program or a career path can potentially be advantageous, although you don't want it to get out of control because as he points out in his books, there's so many stupid bureaucracies, regulators that serve no purpose and they need to be flushed. But this is one of the reasons I, I see libertarianism as kind of an idealistic pipe dream. You need the right structure from the get-go. It's hard to do it post facto. To give you an example, uh, Harry Brown, How I Found Freedom in a Free World, that's another good book. He says, well, I just got rid of my employees and rehired them as independent contractors because that's a, a better way to handle it. We all have freedom of association. The only issue with being a 1099, I picked up a side hustle this year, which involves that. If you are, let's say, a highly skilled graphic designer, or maybe you're a plumber and you can deduct all the equipment you have, yeah, a 1099 can be a benefit. But if you don't have much to deduct, like the place where I work, it's just kind of a, it's more of an office setting. Then you start looking at it. Oh yeah, you're making this money, but because of payroll taxes, because of income taxes, you have to factor that in. And it's going to cost, once you start, severing it, you have to do quarterly payments, you have to look for things you can deduct. It's not all that fantastic. If you had a system where everyone's a 1099, but you eliminated most of those levies and you have a structure at the federal level, like maybe attuned to the Chilean constitution, where it's very hard for the state to get involved in the economy, and you have the appropriate demographics, people that are conscientious, high trust, okay. But it's gonna be difficult because what happens Whenever you try to broach cutting the government, because a program is generated and it, it, of course with it is a stakeholder. So you say, I'm gonna reduce this. Oh, well, you're going after my interests. That's why if you look at most democratic elections, it's between who's gonna give you a program or the other side might give you a tax cut, give you some more money back, but they're not trying to seriously address the problem because that would leave them in a situation where you might get something less, you're gonna vote against them. Even with all that being said, we have to acknowledge there are certain elements which the individual worker cannot control. Even if he's decent, he's judicious, he's willing to change jobs, to try to improve his situation. Brooke, as I understand, is not in favor of immigration restrictions because he says that immigrants benefit the economy. And that might be true to a limited extent, but nowadays it appears to be a gravy train for universities and corporations. I'm seeing a lot of these videos of people claiming they can't get jobs even in STEM, in IT, and some might be clickbait, like there was some Pooja saying she can't get a job in tech, and then another video is she's spending $1,400 a month on groceries, I'm thinking, how are you doing that? Like I walked into this juice bar, organic, just out of curiosity, and it's like, hi! is this Latino with a perm and rainbow fingernails. And I said, all right, you go to the touch screen, try to order a drink, healthful as they call it. This came to $12 for a 16 ounce, not even all the way full. I said, this is ridiculous. 
you know, you can go screw yourself, but that's probably what he wanted to do. When it comes to this guy, he's a Gen Xer, 55, laid off, overweight, like 350 pounds, I think, at six feet. So he was getting attacked in the comments. But I see this in almost every video when a person tries to bring up the struggles of the economy or lack of friendship, lack of relationships. You can just recognize how uncreative human beings are because they're just automatons repeating the same talking points. Yeah, you go to gym, stop being a victim. Yeah. Network, go to meetups, be confident, work on your personality. Like these people are morons. If you say to me in real life, if someone tells me stop being a victim, probably gonna knock their teeth out at this point. I'm just sick of it because they always assume too that the person in question is not doing any of those things, has not previously done those things, that they're just marching in. It's like if you talk about a black pill subject, you'll always get that imbecile that will wade through totally oblivious, no self-awareness. Hey, have you guys tried self-improvement? And they're not doing it in a sarcastic fashion. I, I just, it amazes me, the willingness of people. And I don't think that the typical anonymous commenter on these sorts of videos where people have lost their jobs are particularly successful. They're just projecting the same narrative they've heard from the same idiots over the years that that's how you respond, which is you start lifting weights and you know, be positive. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, it sucks. But we go back to the same problem because now you're even seeing these, I guess, the East Asians, uh, South Asians that have American citizenship. The latter group are interesting because they'll be whining about getting replaced by actual South Asians off the boat. And I don't have as much sympathy there because it's like these are the same people that are extremely cliquish, racist, typically towards natives. But nonetheless, if that's happening, it's not logical for a nation state, if you want to claim you're a nation, where you bring in a bunch of immigrants that are going to compete with your children for increasingly scarce jobs, particularly as AI picks up. The whole argument of get a STEM degree, but then you can't get a job because you're being undercut by someone overseas, that's not a rational approach for a country. That's just going to make a lot of your population resigned, uh, oriented towards neatdom, just not caring. So it's a very, that, that's the problem, I think, fundamentally. You can say you need to work on yourself and be a better person, but still, if your government, if the economic elites are literally trying to screw you over at every turn, you might get to a point where it is very difficult. And particularly these people who they were brought up with some inheritance of maybe the boomers, the, the silent generation. Okay, you work a job, you have a stable retirement, and that's being eroded steadily. And you're going, well, too bad. You should just compete more with people from the third world. I think it's a extremely just demented perspective to have towards your own citizens. But that's where we are. Now, I do think libertarianism could make more headway if applied to the state and local level to remove hindrances from your enjoyment of just regular life. Like, oh, you want to start a business, even as small as a lemonade stand. Some of them will try to force you to pay a licensing fee. Uh, these little taxes here and about, the stuff with your car. Oh, you got to get the emissions test. You got to get these safety inspections. They sound good in theory. But are they necessary if this thing is functioning well enough? Even the stuff with Ralph Nader, the liberals say, oh, it's because he fought the corporations. But they were already on their way to putting seatbelts in cars because it makes sense from a consumer standpoint. You always see the commercials now, all these safety features. Why? You're marketing it to a certain audience that presumably does not want to lose their life. This goes to that old Sala Salu book by Dr. Seuss, where he's being harassed by these creatures, and he said, oh, I'm going to find the paradise, Sala Salu, where there are no land whales, or at least very few. And he goes through all these trials and tribulations, finally reaches the front gate, and the guy's like, well, hold on, young man, we've got a little demon living in the keyhole, and once you try to put the key in, he slaps it out, but we can't kill him or we'll be cursed. So... Come to me, to the banks of Balabalol, where there are no land whales, none at all. And he goes, eh, I'm good. And he returns home and buys a baseball bat and says, if you mess with me, I'm going to mess with you. This is very positive, in my opinion. This attempt to 
legislate away all risk is very counterproductive and expensive and it just complicates people's lives. So in my hometown, there was this kid, you know, they go around skateboarding and I guess he went, you know, where the sidewalk goes across a road and he didn't pay attention and he nearly got hit by a car. And so the flower hat lady, this is the predecessor to Karen, goes up to the town council meeting and says, My little schmuckaroo almost got pancaked. You've got to build a skate park. So they do all this crap commission work, zoning. They spend tons of money. And what do you think the kids did once it was built? They kept going on the sidewalk and taking risks. I don't really care, honestly, if your kid gets killed because he's being a dumbass. That's, you know, nature's calling, right? Uh, attuned to these challenges like eating a Tide Pod or, oh, this guy put a pipe in his ass at college to drink more beer and he died. Oh, uh, you know, sorry, your best wishes. I don't know what to tell, to tell you. Thoughts and prayers? More recently, there was that viral clip of the autistic Mexican kid who messed with the guy's car ornament. And the dude got pissed off. Yeah, he probably overreacted. We go and he'd give him a little pat on the cheek. Eh, we gotta get him arrested. That's assault. Eh, find his business. Thinking, this is what happens when the state has a monopoly on force, on the ability to detain, do anything like that. Your stupid kid is misbehaving and should be disciplined. But of course, these parents don't want to raise their children. They want to act like it's society's collective responsibility that your child has a disability. Might no, not necessarily. It was that clip years ago. I think it was Disney World, uh, where how all the Star Wars characters walking by. It's like Darth Maul, Darth Maul, and another moron kid runs out and tries to like slap Darth Maul, and the guy shoved him away. And the the, the mom's like, "Call the Imperial Gods." I mean, this is just stupidity. And I saw it for freaking a uh, few years when I was working retail because they would bring their kid in. And he starts tearing up all the paper, like in the shoe boxes, trashing stuff, eating food and just dumping it there. And the mom's sitting there on her phone, like, but da 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 da, I don't care. It's like, if you are willing to open your legs, and the guys too, if you're willing to let it fly, you need to raise your children. But of course, we make excuses for these people. And if you do anything, if you take action to remedy it, you're the one who's going to be prosecuted and sued. That's, it's just totally idiotic. So, in that sense, yeah, we would have a healthier, more intelligent society if we stopped trying to allow people to basically use the state as an excuse to not do their job, to have common sense, or in the case of parenting, actually raise their children. So it's going to be a debate. Let me know what you guys think about libertarianism. Can it work? Is it just, you know, is it libertarianism? Is it legit? We'll have a discussion.